Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to return to the promised land of Copenhagen in Denmark once again. And of course I'm talking about one of the famous Danish gypsy breweries. So we are going to go to Total and this time we are going to have a taste of the Grenadier which is a triple beer that is designed to be very very tart and it has some nice pomegranates added to it. So it should be a very interesting beer for us to review. But as is usual with my beer reviews I'll take you through a very brief history of the company. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. The history is only a minute or two, so I hope you'll stick with me. But in the, the description below, you'll find a link to the brewery website and also to my other reviews that I've done from Total before, and I'm pretty sure that I will add to that in the coming months. So anyway, to tell you about Total, Total was founded by Tobias Emil Jensen and Tori Geinter, who were actually students of Mikkel Bjergsu, who of course is the big boss at the McKellar Brewery. But originally they brewed with him in their school kitchens back in 2000. 2005, and they continued to homebrew until 2010 when they founded Toil, which of course translates from Danish into English as meaning two beers, hence the little symbol that you always find on these beers. But when Mikkel actually heard that his former students were still brewing in 2010, he insisted that they did a collaboration brew together, and this became the very first commercial Toil beer, which was known as the Double IPA. But despite their short existence, they've gained much acclaim in craft beer circles, and they now distribute to over 30 different countries worldwide. It's probably near or something like 50 or so now that they're distributing to, but a very, very popular brewery nonetheless worldwide now. But as is the case with McKellar, these guys are a gypsy brewery operation, and so they don't have their own equipment, and they use spare capacity at other breweries. They brew much of their beer, as is the case with McKellar, at the De Prof Brauerei in Locriste Heifte in Belgium, which I believe is near Ghent. But in Neribro in Copenhagen, they have a collaborative beer bar with McKellar, which is called McKellar and Friends, and this is regarded quite widely as the home base for Toyo and very recently they also opened up a bar in Reykjavik in Iceland as well so definitely go and check that out if you do make it up there as I've said before Reykjavik is a very beautiful city in a very beautiful country and I I'm sure I'll soon get to check out the bar in Copenhagen at some point too when I move over to Sweden but the bar in Copenhagen does actually have an exclusive bottle shop and you get about 40 different tap beers at it as well so it really is worth checking out if you do get over there to Copenhagen and Copenhagen probably is one of the beer capitals of the world now so really worth going to and I'll be going there in the coming months but anyway that's your sort of brief history of the Toyo Brewery you see a lot of different brews from these guys so I'm not going to list all the different ones as I sometimes do but they, they do probably a good 20 or 30 maybe even 40 different beers per year so do just keep an eye on their website and see how they're getting on but they do have a few, a few regular brews as well such as the First Frontier and all their beers that I've tried so far are really really good you get some really random stuff from them as well so really worth checking out but anyway we'll get on to the tasting of this beer now so this guy is a 9.1% triple beer it's got a single malt and it has a triple it uses triple yeast and it's double hot with Amarillo and Technanger hops and as I said to you it has the addition of pomegranate in it as well so let me just bring up the camera that you have a little quick look at the artwork on this one it's a kind of typical randomness of Toyo there there's a lot of different symbols as you can see um, the sort of Greek the, the kind of Greek uh, pillars and stuff if you like that's the traditional total uh, symbol there they've changed it by a little bit over the few years that they've been in existence it's just a plain bottle cap on these as always but yeah it doesn't I wish it would tell me a little bit more about um, what the labels meant to mean but the Toil labels are kind of quite random but it tells you on the back that the label artist is Casper Ledet and I think he's quite a regular artist with the brewery so as I said to you this guy is a 9.1% triple beer has Tetnanger and Amarillo hops, a single yeast, a single hop, a single malt rather, I can't even speak today, but it also has pomegranate added to it as well and it uses triple yeast, so should be a very interesting beer and it is of course brewed at the Lo at Locriste Heifte de Prof Brauerei in Belgium near Ghent. So as you can see this guy has poured really really nicely, very attractive looking beer, I'll just bring up the light and let you have a little quick look at the colour of this guy, I'll just make sure that you're seeing it. As you can see it's poured a nice um, kind of dark orangey amber colour, it's completely hazy, if I put my fingers behind it you can see there's no transparency through that at all. It's got a finger of a frothy, slightly creamy coloured head, There is it is mainly white but it is slightly creamy at the same time, but it's a little bit bumpy too so 
I would describe that as being a kind of mix between a frothy and a bumpy head. There's a little bit of sedimentation, just a few particles kind of floating around in this one, but mainly it's quite a nice, it's mainly quite a nice kind of just hazy beer, I would guess. A nice bright, rich, orangey amber colour, I would say. But yeah, there's not much in the way of visible carbonation in this one, just a few little bubbles going up towards the bottom of the glass, but it looks really, really nice. So let's give it a smell and see how we get on. Well, as is always the case with the Toyo beers, you've got a really big nose on this guy. It's actually quite forward on the fruity element. So the first thing that you'll notice about this guy is that there's a big kind of orangey note coming off this guy. And, and that's probably, that's from the Amarillo hop. The Amarillo hop always gives you this big orangey bouquet. But you can pick up some kind of grassiness and slightly florally aromatic character to this one as well. But it's got a little bit of an odd fruitiness to it as well, which must be the pomegranate. I never really eat pomegranate that much, but or I don't even really know what it smells like actually. But you can definitely pick up just a little bit of an odd fruitiness in there, but the Amarillo hop really is coming out quite strongly in this. I remember that from the Brewdog um, single hop IPAs, and you can really smell the Amarillo hop coming out of this one. But it smells really, really nice. So underneath that, if you swirl it up a little bit, you can pick up a little bit of the kind of big bready malts that are typical of these kind of Belgian styles of beer. Nice breadiness, a sweet yeasty character, and just a little bit of caramel malt. But as I say, it's very forward on the fruit. The fruit is actually more of a kind of orangey peel. It's a very, very sharp orange. But you can pick up a little bit of that pomegranate, and there is a grassy and aromatic character from the hops. So as I always say, just pay a little bit of attention to the nose of your beer before you drink it, but it smells very nice and very orangey fruity. But without further ado, let's get stuck into this guy. This is the Grenadier from Tottul in Copenhagen in Denmark. Slange. Yeah. A really tart, uh, a really tart triple this one actually. This, as it says on the bottle, that's how it's turned out. Very forward on the orange flavours I think. You've got to let your mouth adjust to it because it is very sharp on these orange flavours. You do have to just let your mouth adjust to that a little bit. But yeah, much like the ar aroma actually, you're picking up a lot of the same stuff. It is very tart. You've got a nice big juicy orangey flavour that just goes right around the edges of the tongue there and it is very wet and very juicy but at the same time there's a little bit of a hoppy dryness to it. It's quite an aromatic -y and slightly spicy flavour that's coming out of it. And you've got just this lingering sweetness that seems to go into the aftertaste and it's quite unusual. You've got this around the, the sort of back edges of the tongue you've got this unusual mix between pomegranate. It's almost a kind of um, reddish, the, the pomegranate I'm sure is a kind of reddish fruit and you can just pick up that sort of red slightly berryish flavour in the, the sides of the tongue there just as you move forward into the kind of curve but it's mainly a big juicy orange flavour and there is a bit of spiciness which is the aromatic character from the Amarillo hop in there so it's it's quite interesting. I want to say there's just a little touch of a kind of grassiness, a slightly earthy grassiness in there and that's the Tetnanger hop coming out. The Tetnanger hop from what I remember usually is quite a, a kind of grassy one. The Germans like to use that in Hellas beers so you can pick up just this kind of sharp aromatic -y grassiness coming out of it but there is just a teeny teeny little bit of earthy character in there too so just pay attention to the edge of your, your palate here for the those different kind of hoppy flavours but mainly orange, a little bit of pomegranate, a kind of reddish berry flavour but there's a definite aromatic -y and grassy hop in there with just a little bit of earthy character so you can pick out the two individual components of the Amarillo and the Tetnanger hop so it's, it's quite an interesting one that. As you take a few more sips into it though you feel the malt base building up a little bit more. It is quite a mild malt base. It is more of a hop forward triple beer. 
normally from a triple you would expect a bit more caramel but I'm not really picking up very much of a kind of caramel malt at all you can smell just a little bit of it in the aroma there's a sort of slightly biscuity caramel comes out in the aroma but it really isn't that present in the in the palate you've got a nice kind of um, light white bread character that just blankets the middle of the tongue and a little bit of yeasty sweetness but it is quite mild this is a, a really really hop forward beer but Toil of course are known for doing that with their kind of uh, their sort of light beers like this if you like rather than the darker beers the darker beers are always very malt forward but this is more of a hop forward brewery or hop forward brew rather but yeah a really nice fruity, orangey, juicy flavour with this, so if you like your kind of nice fruity beers, it is really quite interesting actually in that regard. And as I say in the aftertaste, you've got just that big juicy orangey flavour that lingers there. There's a little teeny bit more of the earthy character comes out as you move further into the aftertaste, but it's mainly a, a juicy orange character that's lingering there, and there is just a little bit of that kind of reddish berry pomegranate flavour that's coming out there. So it's it's very interesting, but I'm... I'm sure there should be a little bit more from the uh, the caramel in there from to make it a sort of tripel but it's meant to be quite a tart tripel so at the same time I can see what they're going for but the style for this one for me is a little bit unusual but in terms of the mouthfeel of this guy it's quite mid-bodied as I say it is very very sharp with the orange flavours but it's got quite a smooth carbonation in it but yeah it's got quite a an oily mouthfeel and that's just the juicy characters that really helps bring out these orangey juicy characters in the beer so it's really quite nicely done but um, in the aftertaste it becomes a little bit more bitter um, but what's interesting about this beer is when it is I'm just checking that it is, it's 9.1% it, you really don't feel any of the alcohol warmth in this guy at all. It is. It feels just like a. It has this a similar mouth feel to just uh, to a regular IPA. You don't get any booziness off this at all, and that's quite interesting because usually the booziness is where you get the typical kind of caramelly flavours that you really get in a Belgian triple. So it's it's quite interesting in that regard that the the caramel flavour isn't there, but the alcohol warmth isn't there as well. So really quite interesting. But overall. It's a really good beer, I think. I, I quite enjoy this one. I'm not such a great fan of beers that are quite so sharp on the fruit as that, but this guy pulls it off really well. So if you're interested in a beer that has really big, juicy orange flavours, then definitely give this guy a go. As I say, it's missing that kind of caramel element that you would normally expect from a triple, but it does have a nice yeasty sweetness that just blankets the middle of the palate and some breadiness too, but it's a very hop forward beer. And the, the, the blend between the Amarillo hops and the Tetnang hops really is quite interesting. And of course, there is just a little bit of that nice uh, juicy red berry flavour from the pomegranate as well so if you do like a beer that tests your palate a little bit and your understanding of styles then this is one that you definitely want to give a go of and as I say all of the Toyo beers are really really good so do be sure to check them out but anyway I hope you've enjoyed this beer review please let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer below it's always interesting to read them but I hope you've enjoyed it and as always please like subscribe share all the usual YouTube stuff I hope you've enjoyed this review and I will be back with more Toyo reviews in the very near future Cheers.